the story started off with our dreamy protagonist Miyabi, who always had a dream of making a fancy architecture since elementary school with his own hands. Not only that, he also wanted to live there, and after so many attempts over the years, he finally managed to create his own ideal building but in a game where he was logged in as a player. In this game, people could practice their fantasy, powers and all the other skills as well. However, the place he made in the game eventually got couples visiting it and proposing to each other which came out pretty surprising to Miyabi. He witnessed that new couples had begun coming to his place each day, and this scene had become a daily occurrence for him. He recalled this game called Yum Sekai, where the concept of dreams become reality, along with players getting a chance to go through exhilarating battles within hardcore users. In addition, those who liked crafting could also come and carry out their builds however to their heart's content. Miyabi was also one of those guys, who liked crafting and he later on dedicated his time outside of work to craft. And now finally, he managed to fulfill his childhood dream of building an amazing infrastructure. However, that place now became just a lover's nest and he wondered just how long was it going to be like that. Miyabi used to be pissed off about it at first, but he couldn't help sorting out this situation so he just learned to get used to it. In real life, he was tired of working as a corporate slave, so here in this game, he was glad to be able to make people happy with his crafting. Whenever he read good comments on the community about his crafted building, Miyabi used to feel happy and took pride in it. One day, he received a new mail and wondered if it was a wedding report. But interestingly, that mail was titled as the guide to a special world. Miyabi saw that the letter was sent by the admin, and he felt it was odd to receive mail like this since there was still time for events to occur. The contents of the letter said thanks to Miyabi for the wonderful architecture, through which many people have learned about love and brought them together. Miyabi was creeped out for being praised as a cupid of love, but the fact that he was appreciated made him happy. The letter continued that he would now receive a special reward and get taken to a special world. Miyabi thought it might be a dedicated server, so he thought if he could immerse himself in crafting, there was nothing to worry about to accept this reward. Miyabi clicked on yes and accepted the invite to a new world, after which he suddenly saw himself being glowing and glitchy, then seeing a message from the goddess of love, wishing him to find happiness for himself. After that, Miyabi found himself under a tree sitting with his back resting and legs straight in the forest. He wondered if he was knocked out, or he might have gone through a server change. Miyabi wanted to check what he could do here, then out of nowhere he heard a warning to not move an inch. Although, the bandits who said it were not referring to Miyabi who was hiding behind a tree looking at the scene. He thought these bandits were not supposed to be in the Yum Sekai game, so he thought this must be some new update. It was looking so realistic to him, and then the girl mage who seemed to be protecting the carriage looked into Miyabi's eye. Miyabi noticed it as well and from her eyes, he saw that she was signaling something and it gave off the feeling to him that he needed to do something in this situation. Miyabi thought he should act by distracting those bandits, so he quickly stepped out and shouted at the bandits what in the world were they doing. The bandits' attention shifted towards Miyabi and they thought of him as one of the allies of that carriage group. Miyabi didn't know what he should do next, whereas the bandits thought they should kill off everyone starting with Miyabi. And while their attention was diverted, the mage Liz was thankful for Miyabi's decoy role, and she used stone magic to rain down a bunch of stones at the bandits at high speed. The bandits were knocked out by her attacks, and in the middle of it, a tiny stone fell upon Miyabi's head. That was when Miyabi realized something after that tiny stone hurt him a little, and no matter how smooth the game ever was, he never felt any pain while playing it. So, Miyabi was sure that something was wrong here, as if the world he was currently in was actually a real world, not a game. After some time, Liz was about done with taking care of the bandits and tying them up side by side tightly with a rope. She decided to hand these guys over to the guards in the town later. Liz then introduced herself to Miyabi and she apologized for having dragged him into this. He told her not to worry about it and claimed it was interesting since he had never seen a battle before. Liz was glad to hear he didn't worry, but when she realized he just said it was the first time, Liz was frozen as she asked him if it was really his first battle. Miyabi confirmed it was right. And he was just a civilian. After hearing that Liz lost her face as she felt really guilty to have thought that Miyabi was an adventurer, since he had a decent looking outfit, she said sorry for the misunderstanding, and offered if he was heading to the Angelium town, she would escort him there as an apology. But for some reason, Miyabi wanted some time alone before they left. Liz agreed to it saying a little bit would be fine and told him to not go too far. Miyabi kept her advice in mind and he went out to the forest to collect some things. Once he figured he had collected enough items, Miyabi prepared himself for a tough reality. 
he had tried to remove his headset thinking that this was a game, and ended up realizing again that this was really a different world. So, he needs to be careful not to do anything that might look suspicious. Miyabi wanted to find out what were the things that got passed down from the game he used to play. And first, he gave the command to open the inventory by chanting it from his mouth. He considered the possibility that it might be easier in this world. So he thought of trying out chanting in his mind instead of speaking it. And surprisingly, just as he predicted, Miyabi's consciousness was transported into the inventory. He observed that here, it was way different than the 2D screen inventory from his previous world to a whole new real inventory inside his mind. Miyabi saw the things he collected before were also present here, so now the next thing he wanted to check was to try out the crafting part. Once he used crafting, Miyabi observed it was way more easy than how it used to be. He used the resources he had collected just before to craft out a whole new table. Miyabi was excited to see that he just needed to collect things and crafting would be a more convenient way for him. Not only that, he also got a construction guide for anything he wished to build, and all of this was a major boost from the crafting system in his previous game. Now, the next thing he needed right now was to craft a stone axe, which would allow Miyabi to chop trees and also serve as a weapon when needed. Miyabi checked that he needed 10 small branches and 30 small rocks which he already had to make this stone axe. So, he just put the materials in and crashed a stone axe right away. He figured that as long as he had this stone axe, collecting would progress much faster. But that was not all the surprise left. When he hit a tree with the axe, the whole tree was immediately cut and sent to his inventory without doing anything else. Miyabi was starting to have fun doing this, and now that he got a gist of this crafting system, he decided to make all the things he wished for and live with them. He could go collect materials all he wanted, to create whatever he wanted and enjoy this peaceful life while achieving his dream to live in a house built by himself. Miyabi wanted a life where he could relax and spend time with his family, and just the thought of it made Miyabi want to just get started right away. Now after he had figured how things work here, he returned to Liz saying sorry to have taken a bit more time than expected. She was about to tell him he was late, until the stone axe in his hand shocked her along with that super suspicious smile on his face. Miyabi suddenly recalled he shouldn't be suspicious, so he tried giving a normal face but couldn't due to his overflowing excitement. She asked him where he got that axe, even if he was empty-handed last time she saw him, to which Miyabi replied he just picked up some rocks and branches to craft it. She didn't expect he knew crafting, and after thinking a bit it did make some sense to why he was found empty-handed in this dangerous forest. She figured he might also be able to use inventory, which was limited to only crafters unlike a mage such as herself. Then the travelers, who were being escorted by Liz as a temporary party, commented on Miyabi that he was alone since crafters don't make much money at all. Liz was a bit angry from their mean words, and she told them it wasn't good to be rude to someone they never met before. The adventurers quickly listened to what Liz said and they apologized to Miyabi saying they didn't mean to hurt his sentiments. Now with all being good, they set the carriage properly and prepared themselves for the journey. Once Liz confirmed Miyabi was ready as well, they set out at once on their path with a new addition. They used the map to plan their routes with least danger and shortest distance, in which they would sometimes have to fight goblins at most. Liz also took good care of the owner of the carriage by remaining close to her. After walking for some hours, Liz and Miyabi could finally see the whole town Angelum mentioned by Liz before. There, they saw many citizens, travelers and adventurers passing through the city guards on the gate. From the sight of a big gate and many soldiers guarding it, Miyabi could tell Angelum must be a big city with some strict security. Suddenly, Miyabi noticed that all the guards were walking towards him with their weapons along them. He was completely convinced that he was going to get killed by these soldiers and was freaking out. He panicked and screamed that they had not done anything thinking that the soldiers would stop. Liz asked him to calm down and assured Miyabi that this happens all the time. But then, Miyabi got scared as the soldiers did not stop walking towards him and then they surpassed him and walked towards the bandits which Liz caught earlier. The soldiers thanked them for capturing the bandits and then the squad captain of the soldiers introduced himself to Liz, Miyabi, and the travelers. The squad captain requested to know the leader of the group and after watching all of this, Miyabi realized that the guards were coming after bandits and not him. Liz came forward and raised her hand to tell the squad captain that she is the leader of the group. She walked towards the captain and he asked for the adventurer card for the verification. Squad captain was making sure that he interpreted the information right and confirmed that Liz is the C-rank adventurer, she is the leader, and the number of members is six. Liz corrected the squad captain and looked back, eyeing towards Miyabi that he is a civilian. Miyabi was looking at them and trying to process all the information in the conversation which Liz and the squad captain were having. 
Miyabi didn't expect Liz to be the leader and when he turned to other members of the party, they were all leaving everything to be handled by Liz. So, Miyabi went to Liz and she informed him the one with the highest rank gets to be the leader, and here, her rank was highest in this group. One of the travelers started appreciating Liz on scouting accurately, and also how dependable she is. After hearing all of this, Miyabi apologized for arguing with Liz and expressed his feelings that, at first he was surprised because he did not expect the leader to be a girl. He continued saying that, to be trusted even by an adult adventurer, Liz sure is amazing. After getting so much appreciation, Liz couldn't help but blush. Her cheeks turned pink and Miyabi giggled when he realized that Liz was blushing. The soldiers informed Liz, the leader of the gang that they will take the bandits from here and the squad captain also mentioned that the five adventurers will be rewarded and it will be sent via Adventurers Guild at a later date. Liz and her gang turned back as their work was done and there they saw the lady with the cart whom Liz helped earlier. The last was glad that she can now safely distribute her products. Liz and the gang were glad that they could bring the lady here in the town without any injuries. And after some time, the travelers bid their goodbye to Miyabi and Liz and sent them best wishes. After the lady and the travelers left, it was just Liz and Miyabi who were left in the middle of a town. Miyabi asked Liz if he could ask her a question. After Liz agreed, he asked her if people need an ID to get into the town. This question was more of a confirmation and Liz was looking all shocked and was hoping that Miyabi has not lost his ID even after he has the inventory which helps him to craft things. Miyabi clarified that he has never had an ID before so he needs one now. Liz told him that to get an ID made Miyabi will need money which is around 5 copper coins. Miyabi told her that he does not even have money. Liz was looking at Miyabi with an alien look and trying to figure out this person whom she met a few hours back. But Miyabi being an optimistic guy, showed Liz a thumbs up and confidently said that it is a double miracle called no money, and no ID. After finishing his sentence he turned back and was about to run towards the squad captain by saying that he is going to make a big appeal to that captain. That G helped in defeating the bandits and before he could finish his sentence, Liz stopped him from running towards the squad captain and told Miyabi that if they had let him through with that, then Angelum would have been lawless by now. Liz was holding her head in order to think of a solution for the Miyabi problem. She really did not want to do this but then she gave Miyabi a three-day temporary pass which was very essential to him. Liz told him that if he is planning to stay for a long period of time he needs to apply for an ID card at the Adventurer's Guild. Liz and Miyabi started walking on the streets of the city and then Miyabi also thanked Liz for her help and he was thankful that Liz gave her some money but then, Liz clarified that she only lent the money to him so he better pay her back. Also she continued saying that she would like Miyabi to make sure he keeps all her terms. Miyabi agreed to her both the conditions, number one to register as an adventurer's guild and also they are going to have a party of two apparently so that they can disclose their location from the adventurer's guild. The point is to prevent him from running away from everything. Miyabi further thought that crafting will require him to gather materials, so there is no harm in registering as an adventurer. Miyabi wanted to help Liz with her work for a while. While they were walking in the city, Miyabi was looking around like a little kid and was amazed to see the people like a real blacksmith. Miyabi thought that by accompanying Liz on requests she receives, apparently she wants him to help her carry her stuff, so Miyabi thought that he will definitely come back to this place when he gets some free time later. Miyabi was walking behind as he was getting distracted by the stores and Liz was asking him to walk fast. Miyabi was not much of a fighter but he could manage with just support, that is what he thought. Soon Liz brought Miyabi to an inn. Miyabi thought that they were going to an adventurer's guild but Liz clarified that the first thing he needs to do is to get a place to sleep as it is a basic rule for adventurers. She also told him that nice affordable inns fill up fast, also there are heavy luggages. The receptionist asked for 5 silver coins per night and Miyabi did not know much about currency yet. But then he gave her the money and started thinking that the change is 5 silver coins, which means 1 gold coin equals 10 silver coins. Since staying in a business hotel is roughly 5,000 yen for him and 1 gold coin is about 10,000 yen. He was trying to convert the currency so that he understands the expenses made by him till now. He gave 5 copper coins to enter the city so in total he spent 2 coins for living expenses. He was lying down on his bed and thinking that he had borrowed almost 20,000 yen from a girl who is one year younger to him. It hurted him, even as an adventurer by trade. So he decides that he will return the favor for all help he has received. After some time, in the evening Liz and Miyabi went to the Adventurer's Guild, and Miyabi was awestruck by seeing so many different varieties of people there and by seeing this reaction of him. Liz told him that she thinks Adventurer's Guild are pretty much built the same way in every city so is this perhaps his first time. 
Miyabi started thinking that he is familiar with it in the game but not in real life. He explained to Liz that he comes from a place so rural that he never got a chance to come to town, so he is kind of impressed by seeing such a big adventurer's guild. Liz walked forward and told a lady sitting there that she is back and she is here to report about the escort requests. The lady's name was Alina and she was a very pretty girl with long hair and a beautiful smile. She told Liz to take care of herself as it is very chilly here. Alina welcomed back Liz and appreciated her work on the escort request. Miyabi was looking at Alina with wide eyes and thinking how beautiful she is. Alina asked Liz if the person standing next to her is an acquaintance. Miyabi stopped staring at her and finally introduced himself confidently, and told Alina that he came to register as an adventurer on Liz's recommendation. He bowed to her and said that it was his pleasure to meet her. Alina thanked him for his politeness and then she introduced herself to him as a staff member of the Adventurer's Guild. Liz looked at Miyabi and said that his nose is getting longer. It was just because he was blushing after he met Alina. Miyabi clarified that it was just a basic greeting but then he thought that when he met Liz, there wasn't the time to calm down and exchange the greetings. Alina asked for Liz Chan Adventurer's card so that she checks the status of her request, so she asked them to wait for some time. And that being said by her, she gave a form to Miyabi-san to fill out the application in the meantime. Miyabi took the form and started reading the adventurer's registration form. He was shocked that he has never seen those letters before but he can read them normally. He wondered if this is another effect of data transfer. Then he read in the form that there are seven adventurer ranks in total and it fluctuates based on evaluation of requests and guild contribution. The topmost rank was S which was followed by a to F. He further read the form and concluded that an adventurer's card can be used as identification and apparently a person can also use it to deposit his money just like a bank. He later thought that it is not practical to carry around all his money while he is taking a request. The rules mentioned in the form were to be civil, to value cooperation and no fighting. According to Miyani this was not something to mention in the terms and conditions but anyways he was okay with it but then he thought. Maybe adventurers are not the most civilized people. Liz was amazed that he actually read the form. Miyabi said of course he reads every form before signing it. As if a person does not read the contract properly then you will never know what might happen later. This was one of his memories as a corporate slave. Liz was not expecting him to read it just like the 90% of the people but he did it anyway. Alina came back and was shocked to see Miyabi reading the terms and conditions. She said that Adventurer's Guild is very grateful that he took the time to look it over and being an acquaintance of Liz, she believed that Miyabi is a serious person. Miyabi couldn't help but wonder that all the terms were so rudimentary in the terms and conditions and Alina must be having a really hard time. While Miyabi was signing the form, Liz saw him and held his hand to stop him. Miyabi looked at the form and realized that he did not pay attention and ended up writing in Japanese. He really thought that this time he would not have an excuse to save himself but then, Liz suggested to him that he should fill up supporters for the occupation part. Miyabi was shocked that Liz did not stop him for his signature, but the occupation he mentioned. While Liz explained to him that usually long-term requests and escort requests will make it more difficult to take care of weapons and armor so in these situations, they temporarily hire a supporter. Miyabi was relieved that it was not about him using a Japanese signature. Miyabi clarified that the supporter is the adventurer who works in the background. She nodded and said that being a supporter does not mean that he will not join the fight or get water from the river and cook. He is exempt from guard duty at night so it's less dangerous. Miyabi asked that with everyone fighting, that is an easier job. Liz disagreed and said that the longer the request goes on, the more she wants someone else to do it and she is always on the edge when she asks someone to escort her. That is why supporters are important. Miyabi understood that in other words, it is an insurance to ensure the completion of the request so it will be mainly chores. When fatigue builds up, he tends to become irate more easily and also it may have a role in preventing troubles. Miyabi agreed and then started filling up the form further to sign as a supporter. Liz said after yawning that she is done with whatever she wanted to inform for now, and she gave the paperwork for the party application so she asked Miyabi if he can do the rest. She was too tired from escort requests, and she has been feeling sleepy for some time now. Miyabi apologized to her if he had asked her to come along with him when she was tired. But Liz was happy to help him and smiled at him for his good work as a supporter. Soon, Alina gave Miyabi his adventurer card and she asked him if he had a temporary pass. Miyabi nodded and gave her a card. Alina was shocked to see the card and thought that Miyabi was really a producer. 
He asked if it is unusual for a producer to register as an adventurer. The leaner agreed and said that most of them would register for commercial guild or production guild as it is related to crafters and blacksmith for furniture building and roads etc. Miyabi was happy to know that there is a production guild that he can join. The leaner continued that it is not that there are none, but they do not have the stamina to keep up with two guilds so they end up shunned. Miyabi was thinking that of course it is obvious and there are not usually any hot-blooded producers out there like him. He will make this possible. Alina said that lately they have been pushing production guilds to work with them and she is rooting for him to do well out there. She also told Miyabi that time does not pass easily in the inventory if he can bring demon meat and valuable parts in inventory. He can easily increase its purchase price. She asked him to keep this in mind when he collects it. He thought that there was no time lapse and no need to worry about it getting damaged along the way. An adventurer's guild would appreciate it if they could buy it in fresh condition. Miyabi smiled and said that he will do his best to bring her a variety of materials and he also wants to pay off his debt to Liz as soon as possible. Regardless of what he is crafting, it is important to gather the materials first and that he will do it along with requests. He will be killing two birds with one stone rather than spending time in a production guild where there is a potential conflict of interest. He might as well spend his time in adventurer's guild. He then asked Alina about a place outside of the city where he could collect materials. Alina suggested that the east area is relatively safe, but there was no mention about only collecting on request. Next day, Miyabi was walking in the town and wherever he looked, he couldn't get hold of which way was right. Eventually, Miyabi got lost being unable to find just where the hell his inn was. The reason for not being able to memorize ways here was that the buildings around were just too much alike, which made every path look just the same for him. Miyabi wished he could have stayed on guard and remembered the ways when he was with Liz, and to make it worse he didn't remember the name of his inn. It was getting late enough for the sun to be setting, making him think if Liz might be worried for him. Then a cute beast girl with pretty hairs and ears walked by his side, and Miyabi got the idea that she was an adventurer by looking at her sword. He figured that since there was no one else he could ask, should try to ask her. So, Miyabi asked the girl if she could show him the way to his inn, and that beast girl instantly pointed towards a way. Miyabi was left confused because he hasn't told the girl anything about his inn yet, which means she might have told him about her own guild. The beast girl looked shocked upon realizing it whereas Miyabi was getting worried for himself. But since she was the only help he could get right now, he apologized if he had scared her, and then properly introduced himself with the guild card as an adventurer who lost track of where the inn was. The beast girl looked at his card and she showed hers as well doing the same pinch, but Miyabi already knew she was an adventurer. However, when he looked at her guild card, Miyabi was left speechless and shocked to see this little cute girl was actually a B-rank adventurer. He couldn't believe just how deceiving her pretty looks were despite having rank even higher than Liz. But either way, he came to terms that this girl was strong, and then Mel pointed out at him saying his name and rank, along with being a lost adventurer. Then she muttered her name Mel, and declared she would help him out. Miyabi awkwardly accepted her help, and then Mel asked him to give a hint. Miyabi thought about it and replied his inn was close to some east gate, according to what he heard from Liz. Once Mel heard of Liz, a girl with Miyabi then she could recall there was only one guild suitable for them. So, Mel started guiding him the way right away and just before the sun set completely, Mel took him to the inn that must be right fit according to his description. She asked if it was right and Miyabi nodded a yes to her. He called it amazing to figure it out that easily, and asked how she did it. Mel answered there was only one in which was safe enough for girls near the East Gate area, since here, even alcohol was prohibited. So, even low ranks could stay there and when he heard that, he understood that Liz must have been thinking about his safety as well when she chose the inn. Miyabi thanked Mel for the help and she cheered him up to do his best as F rank. Miyabi reminded Mel of his name, since she seemed to have forgotten it just now being a clumsy one. After that, Miyabi mentioned that he liked to give her something as a thanks, and Mel quickly replied she would wait here for the gift. He wished he could repay her with money, but he didn't have much on him right now. So, he decided to craft her a gift instead, and started looking into his inventory to get a proper log to craft something that would make her happy. Miyabi recalled he just collected logs in their collected state earlier due to being short on time. So now he used his material disassembly skill to make small uniform square cuts of the log. This skill provided him freedom to disassemble anything from his inventory, and now he picked one of the square cuts. Miyabi needed his magic into it, which began the main process of hand crafting the final product out of it. He was thinking of a particular shape while crafting the item, and it wasn't that hard for him since this was something he had worked on for a long time. 
Miyabi crafted something like a bear-shaped doll of that wooden piece and added details to it as he seemed fit. He finished making it in a short amount of time, and then handed that bear doll to Mel. She looked at the wooden doll for some moments with a sparkle in her eyes and agreed to take it. Miyabi was glad to see she liked it, since in the Yum Sekai game in his previous life, these crafts he did were nothing more than data but now they could bring real happiness to others, making him feel nice on getting his items accepted by people. He went back to his bed and slept until the morning, and suddenly, he felt too cold which woke him up with chills catching from his head. Miyabi got down to walk towards the lobby while thinking that he needed more than one futon to warm up. But that aside, he needed to eat breakfast and then he met Liz who also seemed to have gotten down for the breakfast. He wished her a good morning, while mentioning how cold it was and then offered that he would get their breakfasts, while she just sat and waited. Miyabi brought the delicious buns with some tea as their breakfast, and he told her to eat it carefully since it was hot. But when he was handing tea to her, Miyabi's hands touched hers and suddenly he backed off since her hands were freezing cold. She told him it was because of her poor circulation, which kind of made him feel sorry for her. As they had breakfast, Liz stated having a warm breakfast was better than those escort requests, where she needed to camp out. Miyabi figured from her words that she really needed to have a good supporter, and so, he decided to carry some extra blankets for her. She told him it would be luxurious enough to be able to use a blanket anytime, so much that she would even pay him for it. Miyabi felt like he might come out as ripping her off, to which she replied with a hopeless face that before he saw it, he should witness a rainy morning, where she would sometimes wake up to ground taking away her body heat, and being too muddy to sleep on sometimes. Once their breakfast was done, they went to the guild thinking about which request to take now from the quest's board. She explained to him that requests here were posted by ranks, and right now they were looking at the C and D ranks board. Miyabi noticed on his left that a guild worker just added another request to the board, and adventurers were eagerly watching her. The moment she went off, the desperate adventurers spread across the board snatching requests from each other and even fighting for who would take them. He asked Liz just what in the world was that, and she informed him it was the board for E and F ranks, where people would compete for requests since there were not many requests on that board. Miyabi had watched all of them fight and the ones who couldn't get a request were left there. Those without any requests then went to do small odd jobs, and Miyabi realized if he were to become a solo adventurer, he would live like those desperate guys. So, it made him realize both fear and the importance of him needing to be with Liz, while making sure not to disappoint her. Whereas, Liz went and picked up the requests which fell on the ground because of those fights earlier, and she felt a little bad since these requests were actually made because someone needed help. She put up those requests on the board again, and seeing this side of her showed her kindness to Miyabi. He went and helped her out with those papers, while telling her she was really amazing. He then asked her what request they would be taking, and Liz then picked a request which she thought she might be able to pull off. But suddenly, an adventurer saw the request she pulled and he made a disgusted face and went away from there. Miyabi wondered what kind of request she picked, and Liz replied it was a request to eliminate the ground sheep. She stated that the rewards for this request seemed to have been getting higher, making her wonder why didn't anybody took it. Miyabi asked her if it would be difficult, and she agreed that would be the case while mentioning she had once defeated some ground sheep before. She mentioned it might take some time though, and with that in mind, Liz got into a line for the counter but to Miyabi's surprise, she picked the longer line instead of a free counter. He mentioned it to her, and she told him this counter was her personal preference. Miyabi tried to figure out why that was, and he learned why, when he saw the counter lady with eye-catching beauty. Miyabi realized and exclaimed that Liz must be a fan of a leaner. Liz yelled at him to not say things like that so loudly, and she gave him a never-ending scolding for his careless talking. In the end, she did agree he was right about it, and her reason behind it was that she liked to be sent off by a beautiful person before any request. Miyabi stated that was a wish like that of an old man, but Liz was so insisting on how she felt like a little sister being sent off by her ideal sister. Miyabi figured she might be in it for some unrequited love, and either way, they had to wait in the list until their turn. Once they reached the counter, Liz wished good morning to Alina and told her about the request she wanted to sign. Alina gladly mentioned she was glad to see Liz finally got someone in her party, but when she looked at the request picked by Liz, Alina had a slight off expression. Liz told her that she might not be able to come to Guild for a while since this quest was a time-consuming one, 
and Alina couldn't just tell her no, so she stamped the request being taken by Liz. Along with that, Alina informed Liz that the reason why the reward for this request was raised was because it was earlier taken by some C-rank adventurers, but they failed to complete it. Miyabi was a bit scared hearing that, and Alina advised him to be careful trying not to overdo it, as this was his first request. Alina wished him luck and told both of them to take care of themselves. Miyabi was enchanted by Alina's elegance and considerate personality, which made him understand why Liz was so obsessed with Alina. Now when Alina turned to him with those pretty smiles, he couldn't help but feel so much pride and motivation for this request, while admitting to himself that he might just be a simple man. Liz teased him by saying who was talking cool in front of Miss Alina, and she called him a guy with the brain of an old man, which was kind of true since Miyabi used to be a middle-aged guy in his previous life. After that, Miyabi and Liz went to the location of the request which was the Western Plains, which mostly had open fields with some small rivers. On the way, Liz observed Miyabi had a good stamina despite being a supporter, since he wasn't tired in all the time they had been walking from the Angelum town. She was surprised that he could even provide more support like carrying her stuff and walking without any break or fatigue. Miyabi stated this was more like an effect of his equipment, as his equipment had the effect of stamina boost and fatigue reduction, which was helpful considering that he was a producer who tended to work for long hours. Liz saw it as an amazing thing, and wished this effect would be available for magicians' equipment as well. She stated that magicians usually have a hard time building up their stamina, so she wanted to take rest often but without causing inconvenience to others. Miyabi felt a little bad for not remembering her rest, and he told her that taking breaks was just as important for safety reasons. Liz still didn't want to bother him by taking many stops, which made her understand why many adventurers with mages tend to work sloppy and get back home quickly. There was also the problem that if she were to take too much time, the city gates would be closed by the sunset, and they would need to camp out in the wild. Miyabi felt like it was very similar to Salariman who worked overtime and missed the last train. Miyabi had experienced what it felt like, so compared to that, this world was a blessing. He knew there were some inconveniences, but these were all trivial when he had a nice girl such as Liz working with him. Miyabi was thinking about it so deeply that Liz had to call out his name dozens of times in a quiet voice, just to inform him that she found the ground sheep. Miyabi flinched as he looked where the sounds came from, and both of them looked through the grasses. They saw a deer grazing on the green grasses, and Miyabi thought that was the ground sheep. Liz corrected him right away saying he should look further back where the real ground sheep were. Suddenly, the deers sensed something coming at a high speed towards them from the back, and even if they tried to outrun the danger, they were brutally hit by the sharp pointy horns of the ground sheep. The ground sheep looked as dangerous as they were mentioned in the request, and there were about three of them in the field. It was Miyabi's first time looking at one, and Liz told him these ground sheep were also known as the demon that make vanguards cry, and heard that even ten soldiers won't be enough dealing against these ground sheep. They were strong enough to destroy a castle gate with its horn. Miyabi was not sure about fighting them after knowing this important piece of information just now. Liz stated these demons were highly intelligent, so if there were to be any noise, the ground sheeps would launch a pincer attack right away. Miyabi said it was sounding like trouble, as Liz stated that they would need to be careful in separating these beasts, since they would attack them right away upon sight. Miyabi understood her plan and also why that adventurer earlier made a disgusted face. Apparently, the roads were blocked since a single hit by these monsters meant straight death, so these steps were taken to keep people away from here. Miyabi asked if anyone besides some adventurers got hurt by those ground sheeps. Liz answered there was no further damage than that fortunately, but this roadblock was not good because there was a village just down this road, and for the villagers there, this road was a lifeline and since monsters showed up, they must be having a hard time getting supplies. Keeping these things in mind, Liz stated they must not fail this mission and Miyabi would need to stay sharp even as a supporter. Miyabi agreed with her and asked if there was anything other than charge of those monsters to keep in mind, like some incoming magic attacks or anything to which she replied it was just physical charges. Miyabi didn't think just a tackle was all they needed to deal with, and Liz took it as if he was underestimating them. She told them they should still remain very careful, because those ground sheeps won't just attack once but repeatedly until they get severely injured. From Liz's perspective, this request might as well be a B-rank request considering the size of them. So, Miyabi understood that to deal with those ground sheeps, they need to inflict a fatal wound while they have the chance. She asked him what he meant, and in reply he just smiled and stated the ground sheep must be weak against surprise attacks. He went a bit further back in the grasses, and there, Miyabi used some items to craft a stone shovel at that time. 
Now, he was ready to prepare his plan. While Liz asked what he was going to do now, to which he replied that it should be obvious he was going to dig a hole. Liz was disappointed by that reply, as she told him demons were not simple creatures to be dumb enough to fall for some pitfall which would even take a long time anyway. While she was speaking, Miyabi went and dug his shovel into the ground, and in the next moment the place became a giant hole out of nowhere. Liz was shocked by the efficiency of his digging, whereas Miyabi knew what she was talking about earlier. But as far as he knew his skills Miyabi was confident in making a pitfall within a few seconds and he did so right in front of shocked Liz. She couldn't believe all of this was real, as she asked Miyabi if he was a mole in his previous life. Now, he wanted to finish things up quickly, so Miyabi took out some plywood and placed them over the holes. After that, he covered all of them with some dirt and scattered the meadow grass to it. Now finally, Miyabi used some of the magic to make it look natural and just like that Miyabi's pitfall trap was ready, which would not only do the job of trapping but also keep him and Liz protected. They were in the center of the pitfall with a giant hole in a circle around them. Liz was speechless for some minutes since Miyabi just finished the whole trap in 10 minutes. She also couldn't think there could be a trap right in front of them, seeing the way it was well covered. Miyabi told her there was a very slight difference in the place they were standing. From that area he covered with magic. Liz smiled at first and then she yelled out he should tell these things before. Miyabi was proud of his work, as he thanked her for the compliment and now, Liz was left thinking what she should do now. Miyabi mentioned that since ground sheeps were ferocious, Liz should use her magic to taunt them. Liz couldn't get hold of just how dangerous it would be, and as she tightened her fists, she told him that the idea of using themselves as bait was absurd. But since Miyabi assured her, she agreed to trust him and that cute insisting face of his. Liz stood up and she held her staff to throw a stone bullet towards the ground sheeps. They awaited nervously until one of the ground sheep looked at the rock, and Liz and Miyabi noticed it as well. The ferocious beast locked their scary sights on them and they quickly started running towards them at full speed. Liz was highly afraid of the approaching ground sheeps, and she kept asking Miyabi loudly if this was really going to work. He told her to calm down but she just couldn't do it and started thinking they should have escaped. The ground sheep wasn't showing any signs of not attacking them. So Liz went and hugged Miyabi and apologized to him if she had ever done this to her. And when the ground sheep was just about to hit them, Liz was frozen cold from fear. But fortunately, the ground sheep fell down when it stepped on Miyabi's trap. Miyabi and Liz were relieved as they saw the ground sheep falling straight to the bottom of the pit from their eyes. Liz shouted out seeing that the dangerous and intelligent ground sheep really fell for the trap without noticing it at all. Then another ground sheep charged towards them from another direction, and she wondered if that one had noticed the pitfall by now. She was alerted that ground sheep might prove to be dangerous, but to her shock, it also fell right off in the pitfall without even stopping at all. Liz was glad that the hardest part of this request was solved just like this, and she had no idea it could be this easy. Whereas Miyabi was super impressed by his own trap, while for Liz it was just super weird. Miyabi told her that deeper the hole, the greater fall damage would occur to the target. So after falling from this height, the ground sheeps were all knocked out from the damage. Now that their work was easy, Miyabi told the puzzled Liz to do the rest. She was still hung up on how hard it was to take down just one of those ground sheeps, and here, Miyabi used his exceptional crafting skills to dig a big hole in a few minutes, making her question his hellishly amazing abilities. Miyabi stated he was glad both of them were safe, but that was the last thing to think about for her. She asked him if he had a moment to listen to something important from her, and Miyabi thought she was going to propose to him or something. Liz yelled out that wasn't the case here. And for now, she decided to first finish off those ground sheeps and then talk to Miyabi later. Liz then formed an ice arrow of a large size, and Miyabi saw it was glowing brightly, as if Liz was going all out. He told daughter that even a lighter spell would do, considering the monsters were knocked out and wounded. But she refused to take any chances, because killing ground sheeps in one shot would be the best thing to do. Liz then shot those magic spears into the ground sheeps, and their work was all finished. She was a bit tired from all the heavy magic spells and was still feeling a bit weird to complete this tough request so easily. Her head couldn't keep up and wanted rest, whereas Miyabi took care of the ground sheep's body with his craft skills and inventory. Liz was deeply shaken by the fact that Miyabi just fitted the whole ground sheep into the inventory, which was pretty common for Miyabi, and he wanted to support her properly. She gave him a perfect score as a support. But she was confused to see why Miyabi didn't have any dirt on him despite digging, along with the curiosity just how big his inventory was. Miyabi replied his inventory was just a normal one, and that was when Liz realized that he had no self-awareness at all. So, she suggested they should collect the ground sheep and take a break. 
After that, both of them sat down by the river and Liz was having fun eating a fresh warm bread outside like this. Miyabi was glad he got bread for them and kept them in inventory, which led to the question again just how much could Miyabi fit in his inventory. Miyabi informed her that he wasn't exactly sure how much either, but for now it said that he was using about 1% of his inventory. Liz didn't want to bother questioning it anymore, and Miyabi told her to remember that space in one's inventory increases by their skill level. But to his surprise, Liz didn't know what the skill level was, and Miyabi realized that there was no concept of skill level in this world. He explained to her that the more he used his craft skills, his inventory would expand simultaneously. He learned of this concept itself in the Yume Sekai game where he just had to collect skill points and increase the capacity large enough, which became comparable to even a big warehouse. But after hearing it wasn't the same here, Miyabi was a bit puzzled just how different it could be. Whereas, Liz was just sitting there giving Miyabi jump scare from his oddness, and she apologized if her image of a crafter offended him. She informed him that goods made by blacksmiths and seamstresses were valued, while crafters could also make them but the quality of their goods was not that good, so they usually only worked in making cheap furniture and repairing walls. So in short words, it was one of the less fortunate production jobs. Miyabi didn't know all that, as Liz told him that normal crafters couldn't usually do anything other than gathering. And even if they do gather, there is a constant danger of being exposed to monsters with the risk that they couldn't store much in their inventory. So, what Miyabi did was way above any average crafter, which he didn't expect. Miyabi figured that the environment he lived in the Yume Sekai was too different from the one here, where crafters didn't have the freedom of gathering like he had back then. He felt sorry for them but that aside, he also had his hands full right now, since making money was proving to be hard even in this way. Liz agreed that was indeed the case, and even if adventurers have a high mortality rate, only a few of them could become rich and famous. Now, they changed the subject before feeling too down, and Miyabi asked her for a favor if she could let him have the wool of the ground cheap. Liz told him he was free to do whatever he wanted with it, since all they could sell to the guild was the horns and other parts. Miyabi thanked her while understanding that mostly others won't be able to take anything other than main parts back with them. Now, while he prepared to disassemble the materials from the ground sheep, Liz mentioned she never thought she would be able to bring a whole ground sheep back home. Its horns were material for medicine, claws and bones for making armor and weapons, and the most profitable part of it was the edible meat. She figured they might be able to make some profit out of it, and even get some money to splurge this year on changing their inns to the one with hot springs. Miyabi agreed that would be way better than just getting to bath with a bucket. The idea of getting to bath luxuriously felt so good to Liz, that she declared to not let Miyabi leave her party for now, and even if he were to pay back her money, she still wanted to continue the party with him. Miyabi didn't think she would really just let him be in the party, just so she could make him carry more demons for a more comfortable inn hearing that directly was quite unsettling for him. But either way he didn't mind it at all and thus, both of them shook hands in agreement looking forward to working with each other. After that, they returned back to the guild and Alina was surprised to see both of them were already back. She asked them if they were already finished with the ground sheep, and Liz nervously replied they were just lucky to have defeated those ground sheeps by luck. Miyabi asked her why don't they just tell Alina about the pitfall, but she declined from accepting something opposite of what her pride allowed her to. Alina was still amazed a little, but she was more glad to see both of them made it back safely. Alina asked both of them to submit the materials as a proof of quest completion. Then Liz told her that it hadn't been dismantled yet, and asked if they could borrow the dismantle room. Miyabi remembered he still hadn't told Liz about the dismantlement process, and figured it was the right time to tell her that he had already finished the dismantling. He took out all the materials gained after dismantling which included three sets of claws and horns and meat of two ground sheep. Alina didn't expect this much stuff to be brought, and just like her, the adventurers and other people in the guild couldn't help but stare at those meat. Miyabi asked Alina if he should bring all these things somewhere else, to which she replied it was fine and so she smiled and went into the back room of the guild to get some help. After that, Alina got the guild's dismantling team chief, who couldn't believe a guy just brought so much meat on the counter, and he had to see it from up close to believe it. The adventurers around them had similar reactions to the pile of fresh meat, and since it was ground sheep meat they wanted to get dozens of people to get started working on it. At that time, a kid came and shouted seeing so much ground sheep meat, and he asked his mother to get some for dinner. Miyabi was seeing how things progressed, and he asked Liz if ground meat was that popular, to which she replied it should be obvious looking at everyone's reaction. 
The ground sheep's meat was known to be healthy but rare and it was enjoyed by everyone from child to woman because of its natural flavor. And the fact that Miyabi brought it within three hours, the guild wanted to freeze and store it right away. As Miyabi heard her, he recalled when Liz called him out earlier and asked him if he could not sell one ground sheep because she wanted to eat. He understood why she said that now, because Liz also liked the ground sheep. She felt a bit flustered and now it was the time when Alina came to evaluate the stuff they brought back. She valued 45 gold coins for the quest completion, 70 gold coins for the horns and 85 gold coins for the meat. So, in total they received a whole 200 gold coins in reward which was too much even for a rank of quest. Both of them couldn't believe to get this much money at once, and Liz told Miyabi she was fine with doing a split in 3 to 7 ratio. Miyabi replied he was fine with that split, considering that he should be the one to get 30% for just carrying the luggage. Liz couldn't believe this guy was just giving away the 70% he deserved, or he was just that dumb. Miyabi told her he just wanted to pay the debt as well, which got Liz pissed off and she yelled at him if he wanted to go back a dozen times or what. Miyabi said if he accepted that much, it would be like accepting he was some mole. The leader asked what they meant by mentioning mole, and Liz and Miyabi quickly smiled and said it was nothing. After they went outside, she sighed while telling him that he was the one doing most work. Miyabi insisted that he shouldn't get more than a supporter gets, since the risk of injury was higher for Liz for being on the front line. She felt like he had already paid her back dozens of times already, and because of him, her sense of money seemed to be getting weird. As they walked across the town, Liz asked him how they should divide up the reward, to which Miyabi replied 6 to 4 and Liz again shouted at him to lower her reward. Miyabi said she was sounding like someone haggling at the grocery store, and in the end, she suggested doing a 50-50 split equally. Miyabi figured she won't stop until it sounded fair to her, he accepted that and Liz told him with a smile now it was okay. Both of them wanted to spend some time freely walking around, so they went to different parts of the town including some gardens, followed by visiting an inn by the time of dawn. The inn Liz picked cost two gold coins for one night, which was too much from Miyabi's perspective. She told him this was a necessary expense, and once they were booked, Liz quickly left for the reason why she came here, which was the hot springs she always wanted to visit. While they were going to hot springs, Miyabi recalled everything until now from how he and Liz moved to a hot spring inn right away with crazy high lodging costs. He now had 84 gold coins remaining after getting in this inn for a week, and he noticed a couple getting out from the bath with smiles on their faces. At that time, Miyabi got an idea and while Liz told him to hurry up to the hot spring, Miyabi mentioned that he was going to shop now. She exclaimed how he could pass on the hot spring, to which he replied to her not to worry about him and to warm up herself. Miyabi then went away saying to see her later, and Liz also went on her own way. After that, Miyabi headed into the town to do things he had to do right now. He understood after all these things that having some high-quality food was really important, and so he should prepare himself with food supplies while he still had money. He decided to start with making hot pot with ground sheep, for which Miyabi went to first get some ingredients to prepare it. When he went to buy a lot of vegetables and asked the shopkeeper about the price, the vegetable seller thought Miyabi was just a kid here to waste his time. Miyabi showed him 10 gold coins and asked if that would be enough, and the vegetable seller's attitude quickly took a 180 turn. Miyabi kept the vegetables in his inventory, and then he experienced the same when he went to buy some salt, pepper and cloves. After he stocked up on all the supplies he needed, Miyabi was left with 49 gold coins, and he kept himself convinced to see it as an investment. Now as he walked further in town, he figured the other thing he needed must be further in the market. He ended up going to a blacksmith's place with various weapons and armors. It was Miyabi's first time seeing a place like this and getting to experience all those weapons for real with his own hands. While he was checking out the stuff, he observed that these weapons were really higher in quality than what he might be able to craft. Then, he got called out by the dwarf owner of this place who asked Miyabi if he was a producer. Miyabi questioned the dwarf how did he know he was a producer, to which the dwarf told him to look around and said that weapons were meant to be used, so if there was a person only looking at them with a grin on their faces must be either weapon enthusiasts or producers. Miyabi didn't realize he was grinning earlier, and now that he did, he apologized for intruding. The dwarf Weiss told him there was no need to apologize and it was normal for a craftsman to look at others' weapons. Miyabi said that he actually came here to get a knife for self-defense, and also he wanted Weiss to sell some iron ore to him. Weiss asked Miyabi for his name and Miyabi introduced himself as a craftsman and a supporter, after hearing which, Weiss also introduced himself to Miyabi. Weiss stated he didn't know craftsmen could make weapons nowadays, and he asked Miyabi if he could show a weapon he made. 
Miyabi didn't know a single thing about making weapons, and he thought Weiss had gotten him wrong. He just wanted some essential equipment for making a stove for cooking, which would require 20 iron ores and cobblestones. Whereas, Weiss was convinced and curious to see what Miyabi would show him, so Miyabi was left with no choice but just show the stone axe he made to Weiss. Weiss kept looking at it for some time, while Miyabi wondered if it was too primitive to be taken seriously. Weiss called his stone axe interesting and he asked Miyabi to follow him. After that, Weiss guided Miyabi to the inside of the place where other craftsmen were making weapons. He took him to a certain storeroom and there, Miyabi was amazed by Weiss, as he saw a whole lot of iron ores present there. He had never seen a pile of iron ore this big before, even in the game. Now that it was real and what more, Weiss took out a box full of ore to give it to Miyabi. Wes stated he used to share this much ore with his fledgling blacksmiths. Miyabi thanked him and he proceeded with a doubt, asking how much would Weiss charge him for this. Weiss laughed a little as he stated nobody would expect to get paid from someone who makes an axe out of stone. Not to mention, an adventurer and a crafter at that too who are usually known to have close to no money on them. Miyabi did want to save money inside, but he mentioned to Weiss that he could pay for the iron ore to be fair. Weiss told him to not push himself and just take it since he was getting started. In exchange, Weiss just asked Miyabi to make a weapon out of this iron ore and show it to him. Miyabi was a bit cornered, since he couldn't exactly say he was getting this to make a stove for cooking, so he calmed down his thoughts and told Weiss that he might take a long time. Miyabi also got a knife and left the armory shop, and later on, while Weiss was working, he couldn't believe someone would use a stone axe to cut down a tree. He muttered to himself that he now had something to look forward to in his old age, most likely because he saw something in Miyabi. Whereas, Miyabi on the other hand, couldn't find the way he came from. He realized that he had a bad sense of direction, and should try finding his inn by the name. On his way, he came across Mel, and she called him the lost f rank guy from before. Miyabi was really happy to see Mel here to save the day, and he touched her feet to ask for help showing this fool the way. Mel pitied him and she quickly pointed out the way. Then Miyabi told her that he actually changed his lodging to a place called Furate. Fortunately, Mel stated that it was the same inn as hers, and since she was on her way back, she offered to show him the way back. With her help, he managed to finally make it back to the inn with tears of joy, and he shook Mel's hands repeatedly to thank her. Now when he tried to leave her hands, Mel held them instead and she didn't let him go this time. Miyabi wondered what could be the reason for it, which became pretty obvious when he looked into her sparkling eyes waiting for another cute reward. Miyabi realized that was the case, so he quickly said he should give her a reward since she helped him. Mel happily nodded her head in agreement, and now that Miyabi had bought a lot of crafting materials, he figured he could make something more fancy for her. He took out the fabric and cut it with some magic into shapes he needed. After he got all the parts cut, he set them on the table, while others present around them were looking at what he was doing. Now, he had to sew those clothes for which he could just use his craft skills, and so, Miyabi put some magic into thread and used it to sew the cloth pieces properly with each other. He managed to tie them together and he was feeling good doing it, whereas the other people kept looking at him with surprised looks on their faces. Miyabi had caught many people's eyes, and he quickly finished making the soft toy of a puppet in front of everyone. Mel wanted to have it so badly as she kept asking him if he was done, to which he mentioned there was one more step left to do. Now, this last step was something only crafters could do, as he cloaked the surface of the soft toy with magic and used the ground sheep's wool from the inventory to coat the soft toy with it. The soft toy puppy was looking more realistic now, while Mel and everyone else was left standing there looking at how adorable the puppet Miyabi had just made. Everyone clapped at his superb skills, while he hadn't even realized since when were all of them here looking at him. He got many compliments from everyone, and many of them even mistook him for a tailor. Miyabi felt nervous replying to them, after which he gave the soft toy of puppy to Mel saying thanks for helping him to the inn again. Mel also thanked Miyabi by his name with a smile on her face, and the fact she remembered his name made him really happy. She told him she had actually forgotten it before and remembered it just now. Now after the place got quiet after all the applause for Miyabi, he was on his way back hoping Mel would remember his name better now with this. At the same time, Liz got out of the bath and she welcomed him back with a fresh and warm face along with a very good scent to her. Miyabi was almost flustered, sensing everything about her, and Liz asked him if she had missed something because the sound of people getting excited reached her ears before. Miyabi told her he knew nothing, and more importantly he asked if she had been bathing the whole time he was out. She replied it was actually her third time and mentioned how great it was to bathe in hot springs. Miyabi felt like his heart skipped a beat, and Liz told him he should get into the bath as well. 
he felt like she somehow looked more mature and more beautiful than usual as well as she told him that even taking a bath counts as taking care of yourself, which was a part of being an adventurer. Miyabi quickly shook off his head to stop having any lead thoughts, and he cursed himself for his own filthiness. He felt bad for thinking like that for a girl younger than him, and decided to run to the hot spring to dodge any more guilt. After that, he quickly sank down in the hot water and there he spent hours trying to bring his thoughts to level. Next day, Liz and Miyabi went off to the forest of oak trees and he recognized these categories of wood. Miyabi was extremely happy to have come to this lumber heaven, and this was something they decided one hour ago. Liz was worried about looking for some requests for them but couldn't think of a good one from the board. She figured it was due to the rain that happened some hours before, while the E and F ranks were still snatching just about anything in back. Liz thought if they should take a round trip, but she wanted to avoid camping out on mud. So, in the end, she suggested they should take a day off today even if it was a waste. Then, she saw another request being placed on the board, and she suggested why don't they take this gathering request. And that was how they ended up coming to this tree forest. However, she was surprised to see how crazy Miyabi got the moment they got here, to which he replied he couldn't help it since as a crafter. He couldn't just stay calm when it was related to gathering. Not only that, but all the variety of trees here was just so good to not be left without collecting for his inventory. Liz shouted she got it already he was a psycho and didn't need his explanation. She told him he was free to get whatever he wanted, but be careful while doing so since there could be demons around attracted by the noise. But Miyabi didn't let her complete before he went and cut off one tree which got straight sent to his inventory. When Liz saw it, she thought she might have slept to have skipped when he cut the tree. Miyabi told her it was real and this was also one of his skills. She tried not to believe a tree just went to his inventory without falling, like a dream. But both of them had a weird moment, when she realized this was indeed the reality. She decided to just go for a stroll while Miyabi did whatever he wanted. After that, Miyabi went and collected some trees until his stone axe broke down. He figured that must be it for its endurance, since the item's durability was determined by the material it was made of and stone wasn't that good for a long time. He wanted to make an axe out of iron but since he didn't have much iron so wasn't sure about using it. Then Liz came and told him that once he got done with that tree, they should relocate, because this forest was home to many demons and if he cut down too many here, that might cause problems in the ecosystem here, so it would be better to go to a different forest to cut down trees. Miyabi understood that he couldn't cut all the trees as if this was a game, whereas Liz recalled inside that there was actually a rule for countries to not perform large-scale logging operations in one place, so it was kind of ridiculous for her having to worry about it just for an individual. Miyabi tried to act like he was innocent, and suddenly Liz noticed something around them. She told him to stop and looked at some bushes and there she prepared ice needle magic and shot them down there. They heard the sounds of a creature being hit. When they went to check it out, Miyabi saw a huge wolf had been hunted down by Liz's ice arrows. She told him it was one of the smaller ones instead, and he praised how amazing she was to be able to sense it. Liz stated it was pretty easy to tell on windy days like this, hearing which Miyabi tried to give it a try himself and so he tried hearing if there was anything nearby. She laughed it off and told him it was a matter of experience, and mentioned there was another one of monsters at some distance. Liz assured him it wasn't going to attack and asked him to take a look at something. Liz specifically pointed out at the corpse and she asked him to use his inventory with those sparkling eyes, wanting to keep any extra income options secured. Miyabi listened to her and so they progressed further into the forest. When Miyabi looked over the surroundings, he crafted a bucket and used it to draw out some water. Liz suggested they should take a break soon, and he figured that wasn't a bad idea except the ground was all muddy and not good for sitting after the rain. Liz had the idea they could try sitting on the roots and having lunch. Then Miyabi with his proud voice told her to not think so simply, because right now she was with an amazing and reliable smiling craftsman who could just turn the situation into their favor. He chopped the trees, leveled the ground and in the next moment built a whole gazebo out of nowhere in a crazy short amount of time. Liz was shocked and she exclaimed how could he even think of making a splendid gazebo in the middle of a wild forest. Miyabi was looking at the gazebo and thought that it looked more like a normal restroom. Liz held Miyabi by his shoulder and gave him a look that she wanted him to create a temporary gazebo, not something like this. But this was the real world and it was so inconsiderate of Miyabi. They entered a gazebo and Liz was sitting on a comfortable chair, while Miyabi thought that a blanket would be great for Liz as it was quite cold in there. Liz shouted that this was wrong. Miyabi thought that he made some mistake but Liz clarified. She does not think that Miyabi is not good but she has never thought that crafting would be this insane. She closed her eyes and hates to admit that the cushion does not hurt her butt and also it is warm. 
It was so comfortable that she was afraid that she might miss the demons. The Abi was silently looking at her and the reactions. He asked her to keep an eye on that, because he was definitely not looking forward to having lunch with demons. He turned back and thought that it might be a bad idea to stay there for so long so he decided to make food as soon as possible. He created a creative stove for cooking his meal and asked if Liz could make some fire, but then he closed his eyes in order to produce an equipment, and then he had an equipment in his hand which was to enchant fire. He was trying to apply any attribute to material by injecting magic into it through the circuit. However, depending on the compatibility of the material and the attribute, it may have adverse effects. If he adds too much fire into wooden material then of course it will. He dropped the equipment as it got so hot and also got worried that he burnt his hand. It was close as he usually uses it as a weapon in Yum Sekai, but he guessed that it is impossible now. All that's left is a stand which was kept right in front of the stove and now it was time for him to make a dish called Jingasukan. Miyabi brought the food to Liz along with black tea, ground sheep with various vegetables and milk bread. Liz closed her eyes as she found the food so eye-pleasing and she wanted to just enjoy the meal at that particular time. She was starving and the meal was called an autumn Jingasukan lunch set. She started having the meal and it was so delicious that she could not stop eating. The meat was not smelly at all, so tender with a hint of salt which enhances the flavor and she could taste the meat from every fiber of it. Even with vegetables the flavor was not diminished at all and even Miyabi has never had such competitive meat in his life. Both of them were savoring the food, they realized that the bread they were eating was different from before. The sweetness of the milk is amazing and it's very fluffy. Miyabi wanted to have rice but then he remembered he actually made that bread with crafting. Liz was shocked to see the bread he made from crafting. Liz got happy and asked Miyabi to make some more next time. This was definitely much tastier than the ones they get in the market. She right away asked him to come with her and buy some flour. Miyabi was staring at her and stood up with so many packets in his hand. He already bought a lot of them, flour, sugar and spices. Liz got overwhelmed by seeing him bringing all the ingredients in advance. Then they had food and they ended up spending a lot of time together for the whole day. Then once they were free Miyabi asked Liz if she had fun today and she was so happy with the food so she definitely had a blast today. She thanked Miyabi for having such a good day and treating her. He stopped her from thanking her and said that he cannot detect demons on his own and he did not know that there was a rule about logging. Miyabi appreciated her skills and said that she really looked like a pro today. Liz was blushing and believed that Miyabi was exaggerating. Miyabi looked to the sky and thought that crafting and gathering was all he wanted, eating tasty food. This is the life he has always dreamed of. After listening to this, Miyabi asked her if there is anything else he has dreamed of. Liz asked her not to laugh and she shared his dream about being an ranked adventurer, and he wanted to create his own magic and help a lot of people with that. Liz appreciated his dream and encouraged him that he definitely has the potential to make his dream come true. Even today, he helped a lot. Liz wonders about that because a ranked adventurer is a very far away dream. Liz said that all she can do is intermediate level magic and it would be very difficult for her to become an A-rank adventurer. Then she said that being an adventurer does require talent so it can't be helped but then Miyabi looked at her and faithfully told her that he believes in her that one day she will definitely become an A-rank adventurer. He gave an example of some adventurers standing in front of them, covered in mud. They traveled a long distance to do the request. But they confronted the demon in a muddy forest and with feet getting caught in mud and mud splashing all over the place, it was a tough fight. Even the hare or the archer who was supposed to be at the reed was stained with mud. It was a good thing that they defeated the demon but thinking about the curfew, they have no time to wash and dry their gear. So they had a thought to carry their things and wash it in the river near the city. Then one of those people said that they will be near the city even if they don't dry out, so they will be able to manage even if they run. Liz smiled and said that there was no way anyone would do something like that. Miyabi agreed and said that it is because that's just something he made up. The request was successful but if it had gone badly, it might have ended with more than just injuries. On the other hand, by considering the weather and the condition of the party, there were some adventurers who chose not to take the request. Miyabi wondered which adventurers were more reliable since there were also adventurers who would even lend someone money if they are in need. He indirectly pointed that out to Liz as she lent him money for survival but then she said that she will never give up the dream of becoming an A-ranked adventurer. Miyabi smiled and said that even if she can only use intermediate level magic, he doesn't think that's a good reason to give up, making her puff up her cheeks saying she wasn't giving up like that. 
while strength was important, surely that's not the only thing that matters. Both of them were very happy throughout the day and were smiling. Then later on they saw a river and some adventurers near it. Liz asked Miyabi to wait and she went running towards the river to help the female adventurer clean herself. Miyabi wanted to entrust his crafting to this adventurer Liz and if he can make people feel that way towards her, he was sure that one day her dream will definitely come true. Now, Miyabi continued their lunch time by catching fishes and then grilling them for Liz. She never thought they could have freshly grilled fish in the middle of requests. Normally, they were supposed to eat simple food to avoid the smell being spread and attracting demons. And yet here Miyabi was, cooking fancy dishes every single day for them. At this rate, she was afraid she won't be able to go back to her old life, as she might just stuff herself every day with so much food without being bored. Miyabi was having just as much fun being able to collect various materials and then sleep at night. After they completed yet another gathering request, they reported it to the guild and Alina thanked them for their hard work. She mentioned both of them seemed to have gotten used to partying together. It's been two weeks now since the day Miyabi arrived in this world, and it was thanks to Liz he was able to make reasonable requests. Liz replied to Alina that it was because Miyabi could carry so many things with him which was something she couldn't get bored or tired of. Alina noticed Liz had been smiling a lot more lately, whereas Miyabi stated she had actually been more mad at him lately. Alina said that was because she cared about him, which made her flustered and get mad at Alina. Miyabi realized Liz was actually being taken care of by Alina as well as an elder sister. However, he wasn't sure Liz would care about him the same. Then, Alina mentioned both of them had been taking a lot of gathering requests lately, so she asked if they would like to try a new request soon. Miyabi observed that Liz was clearly not doing what she was supposed to be doing, so in other words, he was still being cared for by her. He understood it was risky taking on a long-term request, while also protecting their support, so Liz had been very careful to make sure not to get him hurt. But now that he knew about Liz's dream to reach rank A, he didn't want to get in the way of her dream. So, Liz asked him what he was going to do after this, as they had just finished the request and had some free time. And Miyabi replied he would go and practice his enchantment. Liz figured if that was the case, she would go study some magic as well. Miyabi saw she was surely diligent and asked her why don't she get some rest instead. Both of them argued a little bit to send the other to get some rest, but they considered these activities as their hobbies. And after pouting for a few seconds, they laughed together and decided to just do what they could for now. Now back at his place, Miyabi practiced enchanting fire to the blocks and then using it to warm some water. It was proving to be hard for him, since enchantment was one of the most difficult systems in Yum Sekai. He recalled that materials and attributes had different compatibilities, and if they were compatible, it was easy to allow magic to pass through it. This was insanely difficult also because an error could create a blast, so Miyabi was being very concentrated on adjusting the amount of magic. Sometimes, Miyabi failed on purpose and used it as a heat source, but this time he wanted to enchant it the right way by filling the magic circuit till the very end. Finally, he managed to be successful in completing one magic imbued block and his eyes sparkled by his first ever perfect thermal block. He then used the thermal blocks in their inn and Liz liked them as they wouldn't need a heater anymore. He was sure she would love them, but Miyabi thought there was still the problem of a cold when they would be outside. He kept thinking about what could be easy to wear and keep one hot when traveling, and then he came up with the idea of a thermal undershirt. Miyabi felt like he was some genius and decided to tell Liz about this. But when he went to Liz and asked her if he could borrow her undershirt, she obviously called him a pervert, creep and a weirdo. Miyabi realized what he just did was kind of sexual harassment, and came to realize there was no way he could find a borrowed undershirt from a girl. Miyabi went and laid down on the field near the city gates feeling hopeless and he considered if he could use some robe for heating. Then the guards came and told him it was about time to close the gate, and Miyabi went inside the city just in time. However, when he returned back to the inn, he felt happy that normally he would get lost here but not this time, because he got a city map for himself. He then read the map and found his path to the inn by himself, and on the way, he coincidentally ran into Mel, and she quickly told him the way to the inn without even being asked. Miyabi happily told her that he wasn't lost today, which surprised Mel because she was kind of expecting to get another reward. Miyabi knew he should give her something as a reward, and so he made her a soft toy of duck. He noticed Mel seemed to be going somewhere at this hour, and she told she was going to a weapon repair shop because her sword was a bit chopped. However, Miyabi could see it was more than just a bit. She mentioned it had been like this for quite some time, and Miyabi asked the obvious that she didn't take care of it properly. 
He then stated that he was interested in the repair of this sword and asked if he could come along to observe. Mel didn't mind it at all and both of them ended up going together to the blacksmith Weiss. Weiss yelled out at Mel and scolded her to bring the damaged sword to him on time before it breaks at least. Weiss then noticed Miyabi and recognized they had met before. Miyabi told Weiss that he hadn't managed to make a weapon yet, and right now he was here just to observe the sword repair. Weiss gave a thorough scolding to Mel along with some fist bumps. After that, he stated he got a lot of repair orders coming in, so this repair might take a while. Mel told him she actually wanted her sword soon, which was an absurd request from her. Weiss then looked at Miyabi and told him that he might be able to use his crafting skills and at least synthesize materials. Miyabi was surprised to see that Weiss wanted him to take care of the repair, even if he had never done it before. It wasn't like he didn't want to do it, but the problem was if it failed, the material used for synthesis would end up destroyed. He also observed that Mel's sword seemed to have been made from pretty good materials and asked if it was okay for him to use expensive materials like that. Weiss told him repairs of this level don't come very often, and mentioned that manipulating magic should be one of crafters' specialties. Miyabi figured he could do it but he wasn't sure of the chances. Then Mel told him not to worry about taking a loss, and Miyabi was moved by her confidence and trust in him. Mel also offered to give him an appropriate reward, and also provided the material dragon fang which would be needed to conduct repair. Weiss and Mel sat down to see what Miyabi would do, and he felt a little pressured and sat down on a table with the sword and dragon to concentrate on the repair by himself, as he progressed the fang towards the sword. After that, Miyabi touched the sword with his dragon fang with nothing but concentration, and once he linked the magic circuits of both items, Miyabi started flowing the magic to the damaged area. However, it was a bit difficult for him unlike the usual enchantment, and this process was asking for a lot of focus which ended up making him take a heavy breath. Weiss observed he forgot to take a breath just now. Seeing Miyabi's determination, Weiss offered to provide him with more dragon fangs if this one won't be enough to repair the sword, to which Miyabi replied it was generous of him but he would like to give it his best with one first. Mel was cheering up for him and he kept doing his best for the whole night. Finally, he was done with the repairs and Weiss made sure to check it was done right. Weiss then gave the sword to Mel and asked her to get it done by Miyabi again later. Miyabi complained that once alone was enough for him in this life, and that was when Weiss revealed that actually repairing a high-quality item was not the job of a crafter. Miyabi was left shook by hearing that, and he mentioned what Weiss said earlier about Miyabi to do it. Weiss laughed it off as a joke and as a compensation. He gave some dragon fangs to Miyabi. Miyabi told him it was fine since his work was not that efficient according to him, to which Weiss replied that the sword he just repaired actually took around four dragon fangs to repair, whereas Miyabi just took one. So, Weiss smiled as his doubts about Miyabi's skills hit right on the spot, leaving the victim Miyabi speechless. Later on at the inn, Liz sighed as she saw Miyabi sleeping soundly which made her understand he must be practicing hard these days. Now, the next morning, Miyabi woke up with his body still feeling some exhaustion and Liz told him he actually slept in the lobby last night. When they reached the guild, Liz suggested taking up on a herb gathering request, and Miyabi noticed it was yet another gathering one. So, he went and suggested another request from the board. It was an investigation request for the Jade Forest, but Liz wasn't sure about taking it since she had never taken an investigation job before. She stated it was too early for them to take up on a request like that, since they could encounter unknown demons on it which would be dangerous. Miyabi understood she was keeping care since the danger was more worrying for him, and she couldn't deny that. Now that he understood, she reminded him that during their fight with ground sheep, even if things worked out well she was kind of concerned thinking if things didn't went well, she wouldn't have been able to protect him. And besides that, she could make a lot of money by gathering as well. Miyabi knew it was true, but he wanted her to become Ranka Adventurer, for which she needed to get more experience. Miyabi told her she won't have to worry about it since he could just hide underground anytime, because after all she knew he was a mole in previous life. Liz figured if he was okay with it, she could give this request a shot and it might just become quite a challenge for her. Miyabi was glad and let her know he would be counting on her, after which both of them went to the reception. Belina mentioned to Liz this was a first investigation type request for her, and Liz agreed it was because she wanted to try something new. Belina was sure both of them would come back fine, but she still told them to remain careful while conducting this investigation and retreat if the situation gets any more dangerous. Liz asked Alina the reason for her worry, and Alina replied that recently some adventurers who went to Jade Forest haven't come back yet, bringing up the possibility of a monster attack. What Alina said remained on Miyabi's mind as he traveled to the Jade Forest, 
but here he thought this place was more peaceful than expected. He considered this place might not really have a single demon since they didn't encounter one in all the investigation. To which Liz replied it was actually the opposite, since the fact of not seeing a single demon was weird for this forest. The Jade Forest was a place with rich ecosystem, so it was obviously inhabited by a lot of demons. It is always odd not to see any adventurers here as well, since this forest was known to be good for gathering herbs. It was because people had started going missing which made this place to be restricted and off-limits. Liz explained that if people had stopped coming in this forest, it would only mean one thing that the monsters have increased in numbers, and it was possible for monsters to have come from other forests as well. She continued that according to some reports mentioned in the request, the demons were showing a strange pattern going outside of the forest. Niavi also understood it was odd for monsters to leave their own habitats, and then Liz told him which was why they should take a lot of samples to check it out later on. Therefore, she also asked him to collect some dirty waste of monsters, hearing which Miyabi got worried and he told her to at least be considerate to him. She reminded him he was supposed to be her support to become an rank, and so he couldn't deny it. Later on, both of them went to a small hut outside of the forest and stayed there for five silver coins. When Miyabi went to his room, he quickly got into bed due to all the exhaustion from investigating. He observed they hadn't found any abnormalities from any sample they took, and in all the investigation all they saw were just small normal animals. He couldn't help but shake the feeling of having zero clues, and wanted to think if they would keep everything in the report. Now that he remembered about the report, Miyabi wasn't sure how the report was to be done, since they couldn't just go and submit the waste from before as a proof. He was shocked thinking that he might have let his guard down because Liz didn't give him any instructions on reporting and instead of blaming others he took it as his own responsibility as support. After all, he was also his party member. He quickly crafted some paper, pencil and the map Liz gave him before and started making a report with his own hands. He kind of liked writing a report this time. Unlike his previous life and so, Miyabi made as detailed as he could according to all the observations in investigation. Miyabi was amazed to see what he learned in his company job was now being used in this life. It made him realize there were things in adventuring more than just usual stuff people think about. Next morning, he handed the report over to Liz and she asked him what it was. He told her that he made a summary of the previous day's investigation, just to keep their record and make an accurate report later. She figured it must have taken him quite a while to make the report, and he said he made sure to sleep properly after it. After that, she opened the report and after reading it, Liz closed it with a serious look and she declared to help him with this report starting this day. Niabi stated it might be hard considering she needed to rest after scouting and stuff, but she still wanted to help him. He reasoned that he just did the gathering part. Then Liz replied she could just split up work with him because she wanted to learn how to make reports like this. He didn't understand why, and called her a diligent person. It was then Liz told him that generally, they do the request report verbally and then Guild was the one to make the report. She never expected them to be the ones making the report, which made Miyabi realize that all the effort he put was in vain, making something useless. Miyabi told him that wasn't the case, and it was actually amazing since this report made her realize something. She noticed something was odd from the patterns of the marks on the forest map, which were easy to read now due to different colors and made her more aware of where they should look next. Miyabi felt a little embarrassed to get a compliment like that. After that, Miyabi formed an underlay which was something new for Liz. He explained to her that it would be easier now to write down the report even while walking, which was amazingly convenient from her perspective. Miyabi told her that they could just put it all together later in the night since all the papers would be stored safely and collectively. Now he wanted to do his best to help Liz show the guild that she was able to perform a perfect investigation job. Liz was excited from the new development and carrying it out and so, both of them did their best in this day's investigation, and the ones following after. After five days of investigation, they finally spotted something inordinate, as Liz asked Miyabi to look over the lake side. It was a campfire, which seems to have been left out there. She recalled that the forest was still off-limits to people, so it must have been lit off by the adventurers who went missing. It meant that they might be still in the forest, but Liz couldn't be so sure about it and she reasoned it by saying it was odd to see the campfire assembled like that since it was usually suggested to put it off to avoid spreading fire. To Liz, this situation seemed more likely one where something happened to those guys and they had no time to take care of the fire. Miyabi listened to her and after a few minutes, Liz decided to stick around this place. Miyabi agreed and he began crafting something for them to remain here. He used a large amount of leaves present around them and formed a camouflaged base for them to stay in hiding. 
He also laid down a cushion made of wool and now they could comfortably sit here in hiding while noticing the surroundings around them for long hours. Liz had gotten a bit used to his amazing crafting. And then they waited and waited, until Miyabi slept and then Liz told him to wake up in a quiet voice. She alerted him that something was getting closer to them, and Miyabi sensed a monster's footsteps around them. Apparently, it was something like an orc which was just behind them, which made Miyabi really scared. However, they stayed calm and quiet until the orcs went a bit further, as he kept holding his breath making sure not to make any noise. Liz told him this monster was a black orc, which was known for being a C-rank demon. Liz never thought that monsters could be there this deep into the forest, and she was glad they didn't make any noise. Liz stated that these monsters were not supposed to inhabit this forest, and so they must be the reason for other demons leaving the forest. Black Orc was a mutated species which were larger and more dangerous than normal orcs, with higher intelligence. Liz added these demons might have a nest deep inside this forest, so they must locate their hideout and report it to the guild. After that, Liz and Miyabi followed the Black Orcs all the way down until they really located the Black Orcs settlement in a very deep and covered part of the Jade Forest. There were more Black Orcs than they could have expected, and Liz had a bad feeling seeing they were multiplying at a fast pace. She told Miyabi how dangerous this was, because if a Black Orc keeps growing large it would create a higher species with superior intelligence which would become a danger even for Ranka adventurers. Miyabi was left shocked hearing it could become an a rank danger, and he suggested they should quickly retreat now to report it to the guild. Liz wanted to do that as well. But because demons had a fast breeding cycle their environment could progress fast in a few days, which was exactly what was happening at the moment. She told him that gathering members for the strike team would take at least three days, and it might be too late by that time. She apologized to him for selfishly putting him in harm's way like this by staying. Miyabi didn't mind it and he asked her if there was something they could do. But from her reaction, it wasn't going to be that easy. She smiled as she agreed they would now do something about it themselves. They entered the cave and made a hole to enter it, then hid themselves underground. Miyabi started making a rough route map of the structure of the cave, and he figured they might just be able to pull off Liz's plan without letting those black orcs notice anything. Miyabi and Liz were now sitting inside their recently made hideout which was linked to many corners of the black orcs settlement. Liz was amazed that he really made this huge space underground as well in no time. However, they didn't expect it would be so cold here and Liz mentioned they might have to bear with it until the morning. Miyabi told her not to underestimate being with a crafter like him, who won't just let them sit in cold like this. He just got up and told her to sit there and watch. Now, he planned on making a comfortable space and began with making the foundation by installing the soft curved beams and columns. Miyabi added a lot of wood for the ceiling and walls and enchanted light to put a luxurious glowing tree in the center of this space as the source of warm light. Since Liz was more sensitive to the cold, he put more warmth to her space and just like that, their comfy dream house was completed with bedroom, living space, luminous tree and dining space along with a water basin. He was sure that Liz would be surprised to see this, even if she was getting used to his crafting. When Liz entered this space, she was a little amazed and happy to see how many things he made in such a short time. Miyabi was instead surprised to see she didn't give off any reaction to the luminous tree, even if he put most effort into it. Liz continued to observe the warm floor and seats which kept her body warm just like a hot spring to which he replied he just added a fire element to the floor. Suddenly, Liz explained this was all hell and so unbelievable to have done at such a good level like this, which was exactly the reaction Miyabi wished to see. She scolds him while being happy that this place was just more comfortable than even a high-class luxury hotel. And for a moment, she even forgot about the black orcs just above them. Miyabi told her that wasn't everything, and so he took her to show the bedroom designed especially for her. Liz was comforted on the fluffy bed made of wool, which made me feel so good. It was like being hugged by a futon, which was just perfect for the cold weather, and then she again exclaimed at him to not make her play along with his unbelievable crafts. Miyabi was taking pleasure in her reactions and then he told her not to oversleep just because it was comfortable, and left. Liz reminded him she was a C-rank adventurer, so her body would definitely wake up on its own. But magically, Liz kept sleeping like a doll till late morning and Miyabi had to wake her up and she called him dad in her sleep. She was extremely flustered after waking up, and Liz wished to sleep even more. Miyabi told her to just go and wash her face and so, that way, they began the morning by the time of sunrise. Liz walked out right after Miyabi and she was no longer sleepy but ready for all the challenges they would face today. Meanwhile, two black orcs on the entrance were tired after their watching duties, and they conversed with each other that it was time for a shift change. 
but suddenly, one of them got hit by the ice javelin launched by Liz, and the black orc realized they were under attack. The remaining black orc was about to attack Liz and before it could land another hit on her, Liz suddenly disappeared out of its sight. The black orc was left surprised as Liz just vanished nowhere, which was exactly done by Miyabi who got Liz underground just in time. She told Miyabi to retreat a little earlier next time. Now both of them prepared for the next attack, while Miyabi recalled her plan which they named it as Operation Mole. Just like the odd name, Miyabi was confused at first as well and then Liz explained since the black orcs were too powerful for them, they couldn't approach directly. So, Liz considered the time it would take her to charge her magic attacks and decided to compensate for it by creating a passageway around the station black orcs. Then they would just attack them and run away like a mole without being caught amongst the confusion. Liz stated she would repeat this process until they get rid of all the black orcs, whereas Miyabi could just call it a whack-a-mole game. Liz made it clear to him this was the only way, since they couldn't let a higher species be born. So, to start off their plans they began with figuring out the structure of the cave, and Miyabi pointed out the black orcs seemed to be in lines. Liz had decided early on to carry out this plan at dawn, as she needed to replenish her mana first. She wished to be able to shoot magic indefinitely, and now back to present, they managed to deal with more orcs from their plan. Liz was sweating as she had just dealt with the fifth orc, and Miyabi also backed her up the usual way. However, this time, some orcs noticed she disappeared into the ground and began attacking right on the same spot with heavy force. The orc kept beating the same spot, while Liz called out to Miyabi and told him something unrelated. That the meat of black orc was actually very tasty. It was a little unexpected for him, and Liz added if they managed to beat a lot of them more, it would mean more meat as well. At the time, the black orc was bearing the ground which was hardened by Miyabi's magic, while Liz told Miyabi that she was thinking of taking all the black orcs down to be able to sell them off later. Miyabi had a worried face hearing that, since it wouldn't be that easy. Liz knew it herself that her mana was not much remaining, so for the remaining five, she decided to put it all on the next attack. She asked Miyabi to prepare something for him, and thus, next time the orcs were still finding the girl who attacked her. Liz charged her magic and came out from hiding and attacked the orcs with other ice javelins. She just had two more shots to deal with the orcs and once the shots from before landed through the black orcs, Liz began putting all her strength in legs, so the remaining orcs won't be able to catch her. She tried taunting them on the way, which clearly worked out as the orcs were provoked enough to leave everything and run after her. Liz was running as fast as she could until the remaining orcs fell for a trap and Liz ran up to Miyabi, who was the one to set up that trap with a shovel. The black orcs fell all the way to their deaths, and Liz asked him if he put the rest ones in his inventory. Miyabi agreed to her and he informed her that he found a knife which had a message carved on it, which was like a lucky charm from one's wife. He mentioned this dagger must have belonged to the adventurers who went missing. Liz stated she was glad they could at least manage to bring this dagger back to that wife, who must be waiting for her husband. Miyabi agreed this would be a nice way to think about it, and now both of them had finished their request. Liz was glad they were finally able to clean up the rest and go home. Meanwhile, during that time, Miyabi had lingering doubts that even if it wasn't Liz nor his fault, he was still unhappy with the death of that adventurer. He kept trying to forget about it like it had nothing to do with him, but he couldn't help but wonder what kind of person that adventurer was. Miyabi thought Liz was amazing to be able to remain composed and have a clear mind all the way, as they returned back to the town. She stated coming back home was best and this request surely took them a while, as they entered the guild. Liz greeted Alina and stated they were her to report the result of the investigation request. Alina had a concerned face, since she was worried because Liz had been away for an unexpectedly long time. Liz replied they were just being careful until they got used to it. Alina then asked them how their investigation went, and Liz asked Miyabi to do the report. Miyabi reported to Alina that black orcs appeared near the lake of the forest and then they actually found a whole black orc settlement deeper into the woods. He also gave her the report they compiled from their investigation, and Alina found it polite even if the guild would have taken care of the report themselves. When she took a look at the report, Alina asked if Miyabi was the one who made it. Miyabi replied he got a little help from Liz, and Liz said it was mostly Miyabi who noted and organized information. Alina was amazed to see both of them made such a detailed report in just 10 days, even if it would take even a guild staff one month. She praised Miyabi for making it so fast, and that was when she read about the Black Orc settlement which left her shocked the most. The presence of 11 Black Orcs was clearly an alarming situation, and Alina was just about to call for some rank adventurers. Then Miyabi told her to remain calm since they had already defeated those Black Orcs. Alina was left speechless, and then Miyabi put Liz in front to confirm again that they really defeated all of them. 
The adventurers around them looked suspiciously, as Liz stated she would show the proof like normal orcs. Others couldn't believe it all this could be real, and considered they must have mistaken it for another demon or might just be lying. This situation left them with many eyes doubting Liz and Miyabi, after which Alina asked Liz to confirm some basic demon knowledge. She questioned what was the recommended rank for defeating a black orc, to which she replied it was rank C. Alina stated that Liz was good enough to defeat one of the black orcs according to that, but to fight eleven of them was just something not possible normally, not to mention, C. rank party of just two people at that. Others thought they were just lying to earn more contribution and Liz couldn't tolerate those accusations. She turned to Miyabi and commanded him to show everyone the proof of subjugation. Miyabi obeyed her order at once and he took out all the meat at the reception counter. Everyone was shocked to see such a big pile of meat in front of them, and Alina had some time to calm down. She then announced to all the members of the dismantling team that the meat prince had come again. The dismantling team came running quickly to know what kind of meat was at this time, to which Alina replied it was black orc and she needed them to quickly appraise it. The guys were all impressed by the known meat prince and called the dismantling sense of him just delightful. When those guys were talking like that, other adventurers from the guild heard over and they also got to see the rumored meat prince, wondering if he would also sell some meat to them. Miyabi asked Alina what was with the meat prince, to which she replied that since the ground sheep thing happened, he had been called as meat prince for it, like his very own nickname given by people. It was even known to some of the adventurers as well, and Miyabi couldn't bear the burden of getting a weird nickname even in this life. While Miyabi was mourning back there for a cooler nickname for one in his life, Liz called out Alina and whispered something in her ears then smiled. Alina understood what she said, and then Liz went back to cheer up Miyabi by calling him a rare supporter who also had his very own nickname. Miyabi exclaimed that being called a mole was a hundred times better than that. After some time, Alina confirmed inside the dismantling workshop with the chief there that all of this meat was really of black orc, but now that question was just how did Miyabi manage to cut it so beautifully without even a scratch from a knife on joints to dismantle it. Alina couldn't doubt this was truly divine work of his, which just piled up with the other features of Miyabi as a supporter from being able to make reports and reliability was just too much packed into one support. Other staff members had also begun gossiping about it, and at this pace, Alina figured she wouldn't be able to leave this case unnoticed by the guild master now due to the scale of it. Meanwhile, the guild master got the news of both Miyabi and Liz and he sent Alina to get them. Alina asked both of them if she could have a moment, and told him that the higher-ups wished to speak with them about the report. By the higher-up, both of them were a bit confused until they heard it was the guild master himself. Liz and Miyabi were shocked to hear that and couldn't help but wonder if they had done something wrong to catch his eye. On their way, Liz was excited thinking they were going to receive some rewards, after which they would get to enjoy the delicious black orc barbecue. Miyabi was fine with just getting paid, since his wallet was crying from the mention of a barbecue. Liz called him a penny pincher and then she told him not everything should be shoved into savings. Now Miyabi figured they would just collect their rewards and leave, but yet they were here sitting in front of the guild master, not knowing what the hell was going on. Both of them were nervous, so the guild master began speaking by introducing himself as Zion, the guild master and came straight to the point, then asked them regarding the investigation request, if they had any outside assistance in completing that request. Liz thought the guild master was accusing them of fraud, and she replied it was all just them two in the party, and Miyabi couldn't feel settled with the fact that Alina was just standing there without saying anything for Liz, knowing she wasn't the type of person to be doubted. He understood that the guild was taken aback at the quality of their work, and it caught the eye of even the guild master who only knew most things on the paper. So, it was natural to be suspicious of a rank C and rank F adventurer clearing a request that rough. Zion then spoke up that the guild places a high importance on survey requests, and from the looks of it, one needs to have the experience and cooperation to carry out requests. This was why Zion wished to know what happened in this C-ranked request. Liz wasn't sure how she could prove that they never asked for anyone else's help, and then Zion asked the two if they could swear under the path there were no falsehoods in their report. Then Liz spoke up that they just left out one thing from the official report, which was what they found in the Black Orc settlement. It was the dagger of the missing adventurer and everything aside from that was all true in the report. The guild master heard her with a serious expression, and then he took the dagger and stated that was all for the questioning. The inscription of the dagger matched the belonging of the missing adventurer, so he asked Alina to contact the family of the adventurer and give this sword to them. 
Aliner asked if it was fine to just ask a simple question from them, to which Zion replied fitness was good enough, and he never really suspected them in the first place. He knew Liz was plenty competent to begin with, and then Aliner told Zion to be more cautious like usual. Zion then said out loud that 98.2% was the mission success rate of Liz, and Miyabi also heard that she had worked her way from the bottom and maintained excellent rates during the whole time. Out of 173 missions, she had completed 170 of them and Zion didn't want to make someone like that uncomfortable in his guild by accusing them. Not just that, but the report they made couldn't have been possible for anyone without actually being in that place, so Zion trusted they were not some fraud. After that, Zion pointed out that in all this time, they had gotten heartfelt thanks in Liz's records, which means she was an adventurer who had earned all that trust. Even so, it was a little bit hard for Zion to think she could take out Orc solo and thought that somehow Miyabi might have helped her as well. He then read if Miyabi was Vanguard and learned he was just some support. After hearing which he asked both of them to explain everything now. They tried telling different stories since they weren't sure how to report it and Zion told them this wasn't some comedy, so they better speak the truth. Then Liz closed Miyabi's mouth and she revealed to Zion that actually Miyabi was like a walking, talking warehouse himself. To back this sentence in front of Zion, she reasoned that they must have seen him carrying loads of black orc meat, and she even saw him dig a massive hole and store all the dirt in his inventory in just six seconds. Not just that, but he must be having a whole forest's worth of timber inside there, and from her guess, Miyabi's storage capacity must be bigger than even the production guild's warehouse, which was actually known as the biggest in the town of Angel. Zion found all of this so unbelievable, that he wanted to hear it one more time to be sure and Liz agreed that was surely bizarre enough that even she gave up on logic at this point. Zion asked Deliner if Miyabi's storage wasn't just limited to the meat, and she told him those were just rumors. Zion didn't expect it to be like this, and now Miyabi himself spoke up that his storage could really hold way more than just meat. Zion couldn't deny their honesty and he told Miyabi that they would buy whatever materials he didn't need as compensation. After that, Liz thanked him for the trust and Zion looked forward to more exemplary results from her in future. He smiled while looking at her, and upon being asked by Liz, Zion replied he just remembered the staff she inherited really well. Liz asked Zion if he knew her father, whom this staff used to belong to, and Zion agreed to that saying he surely saw she was an insanely hard-working daughter just like her father. Meanwhile, Alina took Miyabi to the warehouse which was huge from his point of view. She replied it was nothing compared to the production house's warehouse, and then she replied to Miyabi that originally, the main source of income for adventurers was the mission rewards, even for her when she used to be on mission payouts. Miyabi learned even Alina used to be an adventurer, and then she replied she took her current position after her party was dissolved. However, she still recalled that old skills like dismantling used to be really slow, so she asked him if he had some sort of trick getting around it. Miyabi couldn't just tell her it was nothing odd for him, so he replied he just practiced a lot for this level of skill. Now that aside, he mentioned wanting to talk about something to Alina related to his mission rewards. Miyabi asked if his rewards could go to the bereaved family of the adventurer who died in this quest, and Alina reminded him that the reward after splitting was about 100 gold. She asked him if he was really sure about it, to which Miyabi replied that he was fine as long as he got some cash to buy more raw materials. Aliner stated it was a sweet thought but a naive one, asking if he was really going to forego his salary every time a mission had a casualty. Miyabi replied it wasn't like that, and he had actually made up his mind to follow his gut and do things his own way even if this could be seen as just self-satisfaction on the surface. He didn't want any heavy heart to weigh him down, and assured Aliner it was just for this one time. Alina heard him standing there, and she told him there was actually a non-profit fund that collected donations for the families of fallen adventurers. So, she would handle the arrangements he asked for this time, but he should make sure not to forget that this reward money was his fair compensation for risking his life. So, he mustn't dismiss its value too casually. Miyabi agreed with what she said and thanked her for the help. However, Alina had a relieved smile on her face as she left and two days later, it was time for Alina to declare the calculated rewards to Miyabi and Liz. Both Liz and Miyabi were shocked as they saw their reward of a whopping 910 gold pieces, which was calculated and double-checked to make sure it was the right amount. Miyabi was left shocked to see this much money, which was like just a hair compared to what he earned in previous life before. Alina told them they could also deposit this money to them in a guild like a bank. Miyabi agreed with her and wished this would be enough, and the amount which would go to helping the grieving family would help a little. 
Then, Aliner also gave Miyabi good news that it had been decided for him to be promoted to D-rank, hearing which made him spill some tea from his mouth. Liz started strangling him for such rapid progression, and he told her it wasn't his idea at all. He also asked Alina why his promotion skipped the E-rank, to which Alina replied it would be fair considering his contributions to the guild. Miyabi wondered just what the guild master was thinking, to which Alina said that actually, if you were to receive big rewards as an F-rank, it would create real trouble for them since they were earning more than average earnings of even a B-rank adventurer. After that, Miyabi thanked her for thinking of them, to which Alina replied their support would be appreciated quite a bit since the guild was able to make some profits because of them as well. Miyabi hoped she would have phrased it in a less greedy way, and then he stated it was time for them to leave and left regards for the guild master as well. Alina suddenly remembered she had something to confirm with Liz, so she asked Liz if she would still donate the half of her mission rewards as usual this time too, under an anonymous name. Liz quickly closed her mouth to not say something like that carelessly in front of Miyabi. Alina apologized for the fault with a smile, and her main objective was to intentionally let Miyabi know that. He recalled the time when Alina easily accepted his request of sharing his rewards as well. She must have been usual with that thing because of doing the same for Liz. He looked at Liz with an awkward expression, and Liz yelled at him to not look at her like that. She claimed it was her money and she was free to do whatever she wanted with it. Miyabi laughed saying he hadn't even spoken anything yet. Alina was glad both of them were getting along so well and with this, their mission was officially completed. Liz was happy from being successful in her first investigation request, and even the first run-in with the Black Orcs, as well as first time meeting the Guild Master. She was freaking out inside at that time and then Miyabi had an idea that they should do that. Miyabi wondered what he meant and thought it must be harvesting materials, but he actually meant to host a victory party for themselves. So, later on he really prepared a feast for themselves with the main ingredient Black Orc, cooked as a Chinese cuisine. Liz wondered what was so different in this Chinese, and then Miyabi asked her to just name her favorite cuts which he would grill for her. Liz stated she could handle a grill by herself, but Miyabi stated it won't be good if they get done with it too fast. First off, he made Liz try the momos which she hasn't seen ever before and thought it might be some bread. But after she took a bite, it was just so yummy she quickly asked him just what was inside it. Miyabi replied these were actually meat-stuffed momos, which were perfect from the cold weather and he stewed them until their ingredients were all tender enough. Liz enjoyed all the momos and then tried some other kinds of bread which were all cooked just so good. She felt like she might just be hooked on this food and asked what else was there. Miyabi then rotated the large plate to change the dishes in front of her and Liz hadn't expected something like this before. Miyabi informed her this was how Chinese food was served. And even if Liz didn't have any clue about what he was saying, she just liked it a lot and started rotating it back. Miyabi stopped her saying it was no fun to rotate the plate back and while they were enjoying themselves, Mel also joined them and started eating dishes without getting consent. Both Miyabi and Liz were surprised to see Mel here, who just followed wherever the meat was through her nose. When Miyabi noticed even Liz knew her, Liz stated Mel was actually a famous B-ranked adventurer. Both of them quickly took their food away from the uninvited Mel, and took some time to take some apart separately for her. After that, Liz got to know Miyabi and Mel met each other by sheer coincidence, and Mel told her that he was just always getting lost. Then Mel told Miyabi that the blacksmith was actually looking for him, saying he needed to talk about something. Miyabi wondered what Weiss needed him for, and seeing this also surprised Liz as she wanted to know how Miyabi got to know Master Weiss. He replied it was just for work and Liz asked him if he knew who Master Weiss actually was. Miyabi replied Weiss was just a nice blacksmith, and asked Liz if he was famous or something to be mentioned like that. Liz looked at Mel pretending to be clueless, and thus she ended up going with Miyabi to pay a visit to Weiss. Weiss asked Liz what she was doing with Miyabi, and she told him they were actually party members. Weiss figured it was a small world and he asked Liz if he could borrow Miyabi for a minute. She didn't mind it as it seemed urgent, and Weiss promised her to give back Miyabi in one piece. Whereas, Miyabi felt this feeling of being left out was familiar, as he asked Liz how did she know Weiss. Liz informed him nervously that Master Weiss was actually called as Black Iron Weiss, the master craftsman known by even the royal family. Not just that but he was kind of an adoptive father to Liz. Miyabi was in for a big reveal as he learned of Weiss's achievements and honors. It was too much for him to know so suddenly, and then thinking of being an adoptive father, he considered something must have happened to Liz's real father. Now, Weiss told him the reason he was looking for Miyabi was because the regional Lord of Angel, Duke Beldeni was looking to renovate his mansion, and Weiss asked Miyabi if he wanted to participate in this project as well. 
Miyabi was shocked to be invited for such a big project so suddenly. Liz was shocked just the same hearing that, as she asked twice if he knew the Lord of the Land personally. Miyabi was confused why he would be invited in such a big project, to which Weiss replied he was actually put in charge of selecting personnel, so he just thought of taking Miyabi in as well. Miyabi wasn't sure of taking up this offer, then Liz exclaimed this was a really big opportunity which he should really join, since he might be able to make all sorts of connections doing custom work for the Duke. She also added he would be working under a project manager, so he should perform as least as possible to make an impression. Miyabi felt kind of dumb from her remark, but he agreed to see what he could do. Meanwhile, at the Angelum Western Quarter, he was carried to the residence of the mansion of Duke Beldeni in a carriage. Miyabi was amazed by the luxurious pathway, and as he walked to the entrance he saw Weiss being welcomed by the guards nicely. It was Miyabi's first time seeing such a big mansion, and he was finally here to work for the Duke. Although he came on a short notice, he was glad to have managed to bring a change of clothes. Miyabi started preparing himself inside to make the most of this great opportunity. He was aware that nobody gets to see the inside of a nobleman's estate, so he wanted to enjoy every moment here. Miyabi then noticed something was off with some plants and observed the poor thing was withering away. At the same time, a person showed up behind him and stated that the plant was actually known as Sepia Rose, and Miyabi wondered who this creep was. The guy started informing him more and more about the flower and its origins, while Miyabi didn't like just how close this guy was. Then Weiss came and called that man your grace, and told him it could create problems if he insisted on meeting everyone in person. Miyabi realized that the man he thought of as a creep actually turned out to be the Duke Trent Baldini, who just liked doing things freely his way. Miyabi recalled the night before, he was being taught by Liz about the common sense and other things he should keep in mind in front of Duke. She made him study a lot of things, and in the end she quizzed him asking some important stuff on the Duke. Miyabi answered that the Baldini house was one of the great five houses, who were granted full authority over the north of the country Forsha by the central government. She added that if he wanted to become a Nobel one day, he would need to graduate at the top of the Royal Academy of Magic. Miyabi figured that Dual Baldini must be a smart man, and he had various authorities along with some major connections which could handle the trades and expansion of the export market. After being taught various things by Liz, Miyabi realized he had come to like this life of adventuring here. Now in the royal court, Weiss and all the team members were standing in presence of Duke, and Miyabi could feel the air was tense around here. He figured he won't have a problem talking with anyone, and aside from that, he took a look at all the workmen brought in this team. Then the Duke began giving a speech, starting with apologizing for keeping them all waiting like that. He introduced himself as a formality, and in front of everyone, he showed respect to Weiss for accepting his request. Weiss promised Baldini this would be his best work, and Baldini took a glance at Miyabi for a moment. Miyabi felt tense inside, as the Duke Baldini stated that his mansion seemed splendid on the exterior. But from the inside, it had been over 30 years since it was last updated. So, he wanted some renovations to be done on the interior and declared that workmen could use a few innovations worthy of his mansion. He told them to have faith in their work, without holding themselves back and achieve the best design they could in here. The future of his mansion was now in their hands, and they shall take pride in their work, which Baldini was looking forward to seeing for himself. Miyabi was also looking forward to working with his fellow craftsmen, and figured they must be cool to be picked by Weiss. The maid of the house told everyone they could also use the storage room until construction was going on. Then Miyabi got called out by a blonde boy with sharp eyes named Sid, and he figured Miyabi was the boy which the boss Weiss brought in from the outside. Sid then straight up called Miyabi a loser and told him not to get full of himself, as Sid claimed that he was going to become Weiss' successor. He called himself the Iron Skin Sid, and declared it loudly for Miyabi to sear it into his brain. Miyabi wondered just why Sid was shouting his ears off, as he closed his ears from the loudness and said it was impressive for an industry name like that. Then a guy came saying it would have been more impressive if Sid only didn't pick that nickname for himself, and he introduced himself as Sid's brother Hanks. Miyabi said sorry for joining their team so suddenly, and mentioned he did want to disrupt anyone's workflow. Hanks told him not to worry, since he trusted their boss's judgment to bring Sid in. Now, Weiss came and called everyone's attention to tell them they don't have the free time to chit-chat anymore. He told everyone this job was for an old friend of his, so he staked the reputation of his business on the results of this renovation job. So, if he were to catch anyone half-focusing the work, they would be finished. 
Everyone attentively listened to Weiss, and then he added that as the project manager he was given rough outlines of what the client wanted to be done for each area of the mansions. So, he told them one by one, and then commanded them to get fired up then head to work. Miyabi was excited from the fired up environment, and he wanted to make himself useful as well. So, he went to Weiss and asked what he should be doing. Weiss handed over some paper and pen to Miyabi and he told Miyabi he would need to have come up with something with his mind. Weiss told Miyabi he was the project lead of his own space, so it was up to him now. Miyabi complained he couldn't possibly just start making a blueprint, and he at least needed one reference for example. Weiss told him that he tried to come up with something the Duke would like, but came up blank. And to make it worse, the construction would need to start by today itself as well. Miyabi was so pissed off but he couldn't complain, as he realized that Weiss must have planned this from the very beginning. Next, Weiss told Miyabi that he would be giving another kid to him as his support, and then put both of them in charge of the primary bath. Miyabi now didn't only need to come up with something by himself, but also manage a kid under him. The kid was the nervous type, who struggled to say anything and then straight up shouted out he was pleased to be working with Miyabi. Miyabi was so done thinking what would happen to him now, and he firstly went to the primary bath. There, he sat down thinking why was this happening to him. The boss Weiss just wandered somewhere, and the kid didn't seem to be bad at least. However, Miyabi found it weird to see the kid's body was 75% covered. When he went to check the bathroom, he found some problems with it because he couldn't just bullshit his way through the complicated design a bathroom required. After thinking a bit, he realized this might just be a golden opportunity for him to just keep the main parts of the place intact and make light refreshing changes to it. In other words, he decided to just focus on his favorite aesthetics which could be added to the bath, without even worrying about the budget. Then the kid excused Miyabi, and he looked at him with a dumb face since Miyabi was laughing very evil before. Then Miyabi asked the kid if he was saying something. Miyabi thought he should first introduce himself, and in reply, the kid tried to introduce himself as well but he stuttered so much trying to word out Karen, and ended up biting his own tongue. Karen stated he was also a craftsman and Miyabi kind of liked that the kid was giving his best to get the words out at least. So, he cheered the kid up to do their best, as he called him Karen. Karen was shocked to hear his name being misunderstood as Karen by Miyabi, but before he could correct him, Miyabi spoke up that the situation was kind of tough since he needed to come up with a design before they could get started. Miyabi repeatedly called him Karen, as he stated various things and Karen ended up getting mad about it. Miyabi thought it could be hard getting along with co-workers. Later on, he went to Duke Beldeni and showed him the first designs he thought for the bath. Beldeni saw that these designs looked like traditional designs of elven tribes, and some other designs like cave dwarfs. Miyabi was a little surprised to see Beldeni's knowledge, but the Duke ended up calling all those designs mundane. Miyabi felt frozen from the rejection and he went away to think of some other designs. On the way, he asked a maid for the direction of the bath, while feeling a bit disappointed since he drew everything as outlandish as possible in the blueprint. But Beldeni just called the design mundane, like he had seen it a million times before. He figured since this was a fantasy world, drawing his fantasy designs might be normal here. So, it smelled more trouble as he might need to come up with more difficult designs, since this world was the peak which he could dream of in terms of design. He wondered how to come up with something fresh and original. And on the way, he saw Karen doing some work. Karen welcomed him back and Miyabi realized he barely made any progress yet. Then he noticed Karen was doing some heavy work, and figured it might be hard for him to carry things physically. He asked if Karen couldn't just use his inventory, to which Karen replied shockingly that his inventory was just small enough to fit some lunch boxes. Miyabi felt dumb to see that was all the space Karen's inventory had, and that was when he understood what Liz meant by saying most crafters weren't valued. He wondered if this much was really the average maximum capacity, and then asked Karen if he could borrow the hammer. Miyabi then used the hammer itself along with crafting skills, and he instantaneously did a large amount of work in mere minutes. Miyabi wondered if inventory was at this level, what level other skills would be. Whereas, Karen's eyes were sparkling as he called Miyabi his master after seeing his skills. Miyabi told him to stop calling him that. But Karen had already made up his mind to become discipline of Miyabi. Miyabi figured at least Karen was now more open to him, as Karen was just so impressed by Miyabi's crafting skills. He wanted Miyabi to teach him that as well, and Miyabi replied he would automatically get to the same level when he levels up the skill, or in simpler terms, just practice crafting a lot. Karen thought Miyabi was born with talent, then Miyabi informed him that wasn't the case since one day he used to be in the same shoes as Karen. 
but he kept trying to reach the better level of his skills and stated that even Karen could become like him. Next day, Miyabi took care of the demolition work in the blink of an eye. Then he asked Karen if he knew what the pit-looking thing further inside another room near the bath was for. Then Duke Beldeni showed up and he told him it was a reservoir for boiling water. Miyabi was again caught off guard by the sudden sneak up by Beldeni, as Duke informed him that once the water was boiled here, it was carried to the bath by bucket. Miyabi didn't quite expect the water to be carried to the bath every time, which sounded like a rough job. Beldeni stated that he used to have a servant with fire magic for boiling water, but he retired of old age so now this was the only way for him to get a bath. Miyabi realized this problem just now, and Beldini asked him if he had come up with a good idea yet. Miyabi replied he had another design in mind, but he wanted to add some more things to it. Beldini was curious to see it, so he just sat down there to wait until Miyabi was done. Miyabi said he would bring a chair for Beldini instead, and then he got to work on a new design on the table. After some time, he showed it to Beldeni and asked if these revisions were good enough. Actually, Miyabi had used the idea from the designs he saw in other games, but Duke Beldeni recognized it right away from another dynasty. Miyabi didn't expect that rejection of this idea as well and got back to come up with another one. Meanwhile, Weiss was told of the progress of Miyabi by Duke Beldeni. Beldeni started the project and seemed to be running smoothly except for the bath, and Weiss said it might need a little more time because he didn't want to ruin the fun by picking just any good design. Beldeni called Weiss a mean-spirited soul, because he had already approved the bath design Weiss showed him before in the final drafts. Weiss told him they could always go for that design if needed, but right now he was curious just as Beldeni himself was to see what Miyabi was capable of. Weiss told Beldini he was really making it hard for the boy as well, with being so picky in this old age. He claimed that even if people call him a master craftsman, he still believed he had a long way to go. So, he expected great things from the new batch of workmen he picked, and Beldini figured it must be difficult being a business owner like that. However, Beldini had to admit that there were some things only someone of Weiss caliber could do, and he actually saw something in Miyabi's ideas today which kind of piqued his interest.